All right, we're going to go ahead and do um, a quick and dirty um, room occupancy load schedule here. So um, we're going to use net values and, and kind of ignore the gross values for right now. Um, and then we'll talk about doing an area schedule after this guy. So um, let me go ahead and show you the rooms that I have already placed in this really simple plan. I have a number, a name, and an occupancy type. So this is just business one. And then the load factors I'm going to be using, I'm getting from up codes which has a 2015-2018 IBC and you can go to the occupant load and you'll find the schedules and the factors. So the ones that we're going to be using are the exhibit gallery and museum which is the 30 net and then there's also a business areas which is gross um, but we're going to be using net since we're using room calculations and we can we'll talk about um, how to maybe do this a little later with an area plan. Alright so I'll minimize that um, so let's go ahead and get started. What we need to do first is go to our view tab, schedules, schedules and quantities and scroll down and pick a room schedule. So I'm going to make a room schedule and I'll put the number first, then the name, um, then maybe the area and then the occupancy and click OK. So it's going to give me this schedule with a readout of the information I've already put in there. Um, a couple of things uh, one thing I'm going to do first is I'm going to pull the restrooms um, and the hallway out of this because typically you wouldn't count these in your occupancy loads because you can't be in the bathroom in your office at the same time, right? So we're going to filter those out. I just went in and put under occupancy in A and I'm just going to go to filter and I'm going to filter by occupancy equals does not equal in A and click OK and it'll filter those guys out. Now I want to do is I want to put the, add the occupancy loads you know from this schedule into this so we can take that and divide the area by it and get our occupancy load total. So I'm going to go to fields and I'm going to add what's called a project parameter. Um, we'll talk about shared parameters later. Um, I'm going to go to new parameter. I'm going to name this occupancy factor We're going to give it number, so it's going to give us a decimal number, and then you can group parameters. I'm just going to group it under identity data, um, and then click OK, and click OK. It's going to give us a column here, and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to type in whatever our occupancy factor is from upcodes. So I'm just typing that in here. And then the next thing we're going to do is add a calculated value that's going to take the area and divide it by the occupancy factor. So you would go to fields. I'm going to go down here to add calculated value and I'm going to name this occupancy load and I'm going to name it D for decimal and you'll see why in a minute. And I'm going to put in the formula and I'm going to do the area divided by one square foot to get rid of the square feet. And I'm going to divide that by the occupancy factor, right? And if I click OK and click OK, you're going to see it's going to take this occupancy factor and divide it into the area and give me this number here. I think I'm going to rearrange. I'm going to put occupancy before area, so let's do that. There we go. Um, so you've got the area and the occupancy factor and the occupancy load decimal. Now I want to round these up. So I'm going to go back to my fields. I'm going to create a new calculated value that instead of a number is an integer. I'm going to call this occupancy load. And for the formula, I'm simply going to type in round up, which is formula, and I'm going to round up the occupancy load D, right? And click OK click OK and now you'll see that occupancy load D is rounded up. You could hide this right and then adjust these. You could rename the top you know the bits and pieces make them smaller however you want to do that um, and then if we go to these guys right um, if you watch the occupants 
Let's go ahead and pull this out so you can actually see it. The occupant load over here, if I come in and move this wall and make Office 2 smaller, you're going to see this occupancy load change. So it will automatically update, right? Whoops. Oops, I pulled it too far. Let's go ahead and just pull it maybe to right there, right? You're going to see it update, or if I make it larger, it'll go the other way, right? Okay, so that's it for that guy. Um, and then later on, I'll do one and talk a little bit about areas and things like that. Okay, area schedules for gross. Um, one last thing that you could do if you wanted to would be to add the width of your egress width in here if you wanted to. So for example, just to be quick about it, you could go into your fields and add another calculated value so egress width total, right? And so what you could do um, is this is going to be a length, right? So it's going to be a width. So we're going to take our occupancy load, and I'll just go ahead and get this from the, and multiply that times 0.03 or whatever um, is in the code that you're using for your occupancy width and then you could click OK and click OK and that's going to give you your occupancy width and then obviously you could go in and calculate totals so we'll calculate totals for that I think we did it for the area before and then also for the occupancy load right and then sorting and grouping tell it to show those totals right so you get your total occupancy width as egress width as well. Okay, that's it.